Hello everyone, this tutorial video explains how to make my small teddy bear dressed in scrubs. It has been designed so that people can make these teddies in support of our wonderful key workers and their families. The teddy is approximately 9 to 10 inches in height so it can be made relatively quickly using not that much yarn. I have to apologise in advance for this video um, because I designed this teddy within two days and made the video so it was all a bit rushed so the video, I must apologise, isn't that great. So let's get started. So you begin with the right leg of the bear and as you can see I've casted on eight stitches leaving a nice long tail end of yarn for sewing up the bear later on. So row one of the pattern states knit one, increase one three times, knit two. So you begin by knitting one and then for the increase one stitch you knit into the front of the stitch and then into the back of the stitch like so thereby making two stitches out of one. So knit one, increase one. So you knit into the front and then into the back of the stitch. Row three of the pattern says knit one, then make one knit one ten times. So you begin by knitting the first stitch, like so, and then to make one you pick up the loop or the strand between the two stitches and you knit into the back of this strand, like so, to make a new stitch. So once again you knit one, then you pick up the strand between the two stitches and you knit into the back of this stitch like so to make a new stitch. Row 15 of the pattern requires you to decrease some stitches by knitting two stitches together. So to do that you simply insert the needle into the two stitches like so and then knit them together. So once again, insert the needle into the two stitches and knit them together, like so. On row 17, you have to change to yarn B. So all you simply need to do is drop yarn A, pick up yarn B and then just knit as you would do normally. For row 18, you have to knit through the back of the loops. So to do this, you insert your needle into the back of the stitch, like so. And then you knit it, like so. So once again, instead of going into the front, you go into the back of the stitch and knit it as you would do normally. This produces a really nice, tight, twisted stitch. As part of the pattern, you will need to do the slip, slip, knit stitch, or SSK stitch. This is a type of decrease stitch, and it's slightly different to knit two together, in that when you knit two together, the stitches slant towards the right, but when you do the SSK stitch, the stitches slant towards the left and it just gives a much better finish really. So here we go, we're going to do this slip slip knit stitch now which is at the end of row, um, let me just check, 37. Okay, so to do the slip slip stitch you just slip the first stitch here knitwise, then slip the next stitch purlwise and then simply knit the two stitches together like so. 
So here we have the right leg and here we have the left leg and now we need to pull across the stitches of the right leg then the left leg to join the two legs together. So I'll just turn them around like so and then you would be begin purling all the way across to join the two legs together. So I have now joined the two legs together and at this point you should have 42 stitches on the needle and it is worth just double checking that you have actually got the legs the right way round. We are now at the point where we need to make up the teddy's body. So I would recommend beginning at the top here of the trousers. So you had some decreased stitches here which formed the crotch and what I have already done is just sewn the crotch together using the tail end of the yarn that was left over from the left leg. So you just need to secure those decreased stitches here. Then after you've done that you need to begin joining the seams. So I'm going to start here on the right leg. So using the tail end of your yarn thread the needle like so and work a gathering thread through the eight cast on stitches along the bottom edge here. Like so. Then once you've worked the gathering thread through the stitches you need to pull this up, draw this up, then go back to the point here and secure the stitches like so and then you can begin to join the seam. Now when joining the seams I like to use a short cut mattress stitch as this creates an invisible seam. So what you need to do is along the length of your knitting, I'll just show you on the green wool here as it's a bit easier to see, you have knots and loops, knots and loops. So with the short shortcut mattress um, stitch what you do is you go into a loop under a knot and come up the other side and then you bring the yarn through like so and then you go back over to the other side go in into a loop sorry a bit tricky to do and then under a knot and back up the other side like so and you continue all the way along the length of the knitting into a loop, under a knot, back up through the other loop like so and then back over to the other side going in the place you've just come out of. So into a loop, under a knot and back up the other side like so. So I've completed sewing the foot and now I've changed the green yarn to, show, to sew the seam of the trousers and it's actually a bit easier to see um, the shortcut mattress stitch with this yarn. So once again you go into a loop under a knot and back out and then back to the other side into the loop under the knot and back out like so. And as you can see it actually creates an invisible seam so it's actually a very neat way to sew seams. So I would recommend um, stuffing the teddy as you sew really. So at this point I'd probably stop there and put a little stuffing into the foot. So I have now completed sewing the body. So what you need to do is sew both leg seams, then continue sewing the back seam to the top leaving the cast off edges open to be able to stuff the body quite firmly. So this is the head 
So you now have nine stitches on the needle. So you need to thread the yarn with a sewing needle. Pass the needle through the nine stitches like so. This is called B and T, which is break yarn and thread through the stitches like so. Just pull that first one a little tighter like that and then simply pass the yarn through the stitches to cast off and then pull up like so and then you need to join the seam to about a third of the way down and then stop there then work a gathering thread through the cast on stitches of the nose like we did for the feet and then join that seam to about a third of the way up then I would recommend stuffing the head with small amounts of stuff in at a time to shape the head and then finish sewing the seam. So I've now sewed up and stuffed the teddy's head like so. I've sewn on the ears, embroidered the eyes, sewn on the nose. And I'd just like to give a tip for embroidering the mouth. Um, I like to use quite a thin yarn for this. Um, so what I decide to do is um, yarn is actually made up of individual strands. So this particular yarn I'm using has six strands. So what I decide to do is to split the yarn in half and then that gives a much thinner yarn made up of three, as you can see, three individual strands. Um, and I prefer to use this um, for embroidering the mouth. Also, because I want my teddy to have quite a smiley face, sometimes when you embroider, embroider a mouth, you can have quite a V shape. Um, and I prefer to have it a more rounded smiley shape. So what I sometimes do is that I get another little bit of yarn like this, yarn here, I don't know whether you can see, there we go, and then I just like to catch the mouth like this with this yarn and I just like to pull it down a bit to create more of a smile and then I take this yarn over to this side and do the same again over here just to give my teddy a bit more of a smiley shaped mouth. Okay, so then once you've finished embroidering the face you can then attach the head to the body and here we have the body here so the head just simply needs to sit on the top like so and then you need to using the yarn here attach the head quite securely to the body going round and round a few times to make sure it's nice and secure and not too wobbly. As you can see I have now made the arms and you simply attach the arms to the sides of the body like so. And I've also made the hat and as you can see there are little holes in the hat for the teddy's ears. And the seam for the hat just runs along the back here and it's quite a tight fit so that it shouldn't fall off. Here we have the mask and the mask is made in moss stitch to give it quite a firm um, structure and what you'll notice is the strap for the top part of the mask is slightly longer than the strap for the bottom um, because the strap needs to go up and over the ears so just to make you aware of that and I've also just put a few stitches at the back of the mask to hold the mask in place once it's on the head and then it's just a case of simply popping the mask up over and then the top one goes over the ears like so oh. <laughs> 
it's a lot easier when you're not making a video that's for sure so here we have the mask in position and as you can see just by popping a few stitches to hold the two straps together it really does help to secure the mask onto the teddy and so he's all set I do hope you enjoy making this teddy thank you very much